man, I'll tell you what, this weekend in the hills have been pretty good. My son scavenged three lawnmowers and we've been working on them and we went out to Home Depot to get a couple things and look what was out on the road for the trash. We got ourselves a home light 4400 watt generator looks like it's been sitting quite a while with the uh, fuzzies and cobwebs all over it we haven't even tried to pull it over or anything yet to see what's happening with it go ahead and pull it over let's see does the motor pull over oh motor pulls over motor pulls over so Next project, we'll see if we can get this one run and see what's wrong. It looks like it's just been sitting for a while. Probably needs a carburetor overhaul. Um, let's take it. Well, while we're here, let's take and uh, let's take and see if there's any any type of gas in it. And it, gas cap didn't smell very good. Let's get the old flashlight out. Oh, there's a screen. It's got a screen in it, and the screen pops right out. So let's take a look again, and. Ooh, nasty pooey. It's got some nasty, nasty looking green gas in there. Stupid ethanol gas that turned green. So we're going to have to clean the tank out and the carburetor probably going to have to come apart. So I'll do some more videos on this one later. Okay, I know it's getting pretty uh, dark out, but we I wanted to try to get the gas drained out of the bounty. So they actually have... A shutoff valve and it was actually cut off and some of the nasty gas came out of there so let's open this up and see if we can get any flow uh, it's not flowing real good it's just dripping very slightly it says off open that thing's probably clogged up but uh you can see in there see how green and nasty the gas is this must be that oxygenated fuel from like 10 years ago or something um, um i'm gonna get the blow away to try to blow in there and see if we can get some flow out of it oh there we go oh nasty okay okay well it looks like it's pretty pretty empty there's still a little bit left in there. I don't know how we're going we're to have to probably pull the tank and clean it out real good. So, so this is the new project and um, nice green gas. We'll have to take and I'm not even going to try to start it. We'll just take and get the carburetor apart and clean the tank out and start from there. Alrighty, we're back to work on the generator finally after a couple day break. But anyway, so the gas tank was here, so we went ahead and took the gas tank off. It has a nut here and a nut here, and then the tank comes off, and we've pulled the line off. And we have the tank over here. Um, we put a little gasoline in it, and we're agitating it, trying to clean it out. And just for you all that are wondering what I do with the bad gasoline, is I have a can that we drain all the bad gas into. And then where I live, the county will accept bad gas at what they call the transfer station. It's really not the dump. It's a transfer station. So they will take bad gas up to like 10 gallons. But I usually don't have that much. I usually only have a couple gallons here and there. So now that he's taking and shaking the gas tank around, I got the air cleaner assembly off, which is really strange and really unbelievable. The air filter is clean. It looks brand new. Hmm. That's very unusual for any equipment that we've been getting out of the trash lately to have a clean air filter. So now we need to get in here and we need to take this nut off here, this nut off here, this bolt out to get this cover off to get to the carburetor. And of course the fuel line right here looks pretty nasty, has a bunch of stuff and I'm gonna have to flush that out, blow that out of the compressor. And it's really strange, this one here, that, that line actually runs in and then there's another line that comes out that runs through the carburetor so i'm not sure if this has a fuel pump or what once we get this cover off maybe we'll be able to see what's going on in there all right we got the back part of the air cleaner assembly off and also that has the choke and the choke is just this little 
metal bar that when you move that, it pushes against this and moves the choke closed or open and spring loaded so it's going to spring back open. You know, luckily so that's no linkage to have to deal with. And like I said, this one actually has a fuel pump. It must have some type of diaphragm pulse fuel pump that uses the manifold crankcase pressure of the pulse to pump the fuel into the carburetor because here is the fuel line. It runs underneath and right into the fuel pump and then the other line runs into here. And of course, the fuel system is all nasty on this. But for right now, we're going to go ahead and get the carburetor off of here. And we'll take and bust the carburetor apart and take a look at it. And once we get the carburetor off, then we'll be able to access the fuel pump a little bit easier. All right, now that I got the carburetor out of the way, you can see the fuel pump here. This is a vent line going to the air cleaner. This is the fuel line going into the carburetor. The other fuel line is up in here that goes ar around the machine to the fuel tank. And then there's another tube right here, which is where it gets the pulse from the engine from the crankcase and there's the carburetor and this carburetor here usually the nuts from the air cleaner hold the carburetor on but you actually had to remove these studs to get the carburetor out but they had like this built-on washer and the heads are uh, a torx a reverse torque socket somebody's been in here before because they had used a pair of channel locks or needle nose or something and then my socket wouldn't grab onto it so I had to do the same thing I'd use a pair of vice grips to get it loose so then the uh, carburetor as you can see right here you can see how green the gas is that leaked all over my hand when I took the carburetor apart so I got my 7 16th wrench I'm getting ready to take the float bowl off take the float bowl off and see how bad the carburetor is inside okay as I always do, I actually took and made a mark on the carburetor here so I know how the, where the float bowl goes back together. But on this one, I honestly don't think it matters. So I've taken this loose. This is a uh, um, 716. So let's take it apart and let's take a peek in here and see what it looks like. Oh, yeah, kind of uh, dirty and nasty. But this part doesn't look too terribly bad. But definitely this is going to go in the carburetor cleaner. We'll go ahead and pull the pin out and the needle and seat out. We'll try to get that jet out. I don't know if that emulsion tube will come out or not. We'll pull that screw out there. That one looks kind of like it's not going to move. So we'll probably just dunk the whole body of the carburetor in. So we'll get the gunk carburetor cleaner out and start soaking this. Okay. So now... I showed you the inside of the float bowl and I started taking the carburetor apart. I took the pin out. When I lifted this off, usually this is the needle and seat right down in here. And the float actually is broken right here. It's supposed to be, see how it's square on this end? That end is not square. The float is broken. And that's what helps push the needle up and down in the seat. It is the needle and seat supposed to move up and down and that's broken so that might not be letting the right amount of fuel in because this is supposed to slide in here like so. And since it's not in there like so, it could have been letting not enough gas into the carburetor. So we're definitely gonna have to get a kit for this one. We can still take and disassemble the body. I'm gonna try to get that that jet out of that hole there and we'll take and see if I can get that plug out and we'll get this soaking but we're gonna have to take the serial numbers off the motor which are right here which is an eight horsepower Briggs and Stratton and we'll have to get a carburetor rebuild kit for this one and make sure that the carburetor rebuild kit that we get has a float we still need to take off the fuel pump the fuel pump up here and to see what type of shape that's in, it probably needs a diaphragm also. Okay, got my gunk carburetor cleaner, brought it home from work, so we'll go ahead and get some stuff uh, soaking here. So, this carburetor does have some plastic. It's got a plastic piece for the choke and a plastic inlet for the, uh, for the fuel. I was able to get that one jet out of the top and that other adjustment screw out there. This was a turn and a half out. This was screwed all the way in. Then I was able to get the jet out of there and the emulsion tube came out with that. So we'll just go ahead and we'll put that in there and let that go on in. 
And then here's here are the other small parts that we got here. We got the float, which we're gonna have to get replaced. There's that jet with the emulsion tube. I haven't cleaned it. Let's go ahead and drop that in there. Here's that upper jet that if this is clogged, this is probably an air bleed. If this is clogged, the, the machine will surge. Put that in there. Here's that upper jet that was all rusted. That'll go in there. This is the float nut. Uh, we can probably put that in there. The float washer is still stuck in there. That's okay. Uh, I'm not going to put, there's no sense in putting the rod for the float or that in there because it's pretty clean. And there is the float that's broken. We'll keep it. Uh, I bet you that's probably what's wrong with this one. And while I got the camera on, hold on. What did I do? Oh, here it is. So now that now that um, I took the carburetor off, there was a bolt here and a bolt here, and then this slid out. This line goes to the gas tank. This line goes to the crankcase, and then this line feeds up and goes to the carburetor. This is the fuel pump. As the crankcase pulses, it pulses a diaphragm inside here to make it pump fuel to the carburetor. And it's got three screws on the back. We'll take this apart. Uh, I'm not looking for very good hope that this diaphragm inside is any good. If it is, I don't know if you have to buy the whole thing or just the diaphragm. We'll get that. We'll have to get the serial number off, get the kit for the carburetor, and probably get the kit for the fuel pump. All right, well, I got my cameraman here, so I got a quarter inch uh, uh, socket. Let's go ahead and bust this this uh, pulse fuel pump apart. Um, it's always good to have like a mason jar to put your parts in, and then your and also your other small parts that you don't want to lose. Oh, I almost forgot. We're going to put this nasty, can you see it? I haven't cleaned or anything. We're going to go ahead and put this nasty float bowl into the carburetor gunk cleaner and let that soak too. All right, well, back to the fuel pump. So we got the bolts out of the fuel pump. Let's take it apart real slow. Up, oh, there's a spring. All right, that's nothing but a piece of, nothing but the plastic in there, so there's probably nothing in here. So here's the diaphragm on this side. Up, there's another piece. This goes on top of the spring. So mental note, the cup goes on to the diaphragm, and the diaphragm just comes off of there. And let me get a paper towel here, and let's... Uh, Oh yeah, nasty. See how green and nasty that gas is? Um, the only what really thing I can think of, the diaphragm is still pliable and we'll have to hold it up. Let's see. All right, I'm taking my flashlight and shining through the back to see if there's any holes in it. There doesn't appear to be any holes in it. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean this up the best I can get all this nastiness off there which is just wiping off I'm gonna go ahead and just clean up everything put it back together and then now that I have this apart I can blow all the fuel lines out this fuel line should be replaced I don't have any here it looks like this is quarter inch but we'll go ahead and just wipe everything down we'll spray this out with gum cutter get it all nice and cleaned and wiped down we'll just reassemble it and see if it works all right well we pulled this carburetor off a uh, Craftsman lawnmower earlier that went to the scrap yard. So we're going to take it apart and just see if uh, the float's the same. It's very unlikely, but this is a parts carburetor. That's why he pulled it off the mower. The other mower was completely trashed. So we'll go ahead and take a look and see. You know, it's it's different. I don't want to trust it. See how this one kind of looks like a, you know, rounded off triangle, and this one isn't. It it it's not quite. And it's got this one here. It has a stop. This one doesn't. So I'm gonna say, eh, nope. We're gonna have to get a carburetor kit for this one. It was a good try though. We just haven't, we don't have enough supplies of, of junk parts yet to be able to pull stuff apart and say, hey, this should work and that should work. 
we have a lot of lawnmower stuff. We don't have a lot of, you know, eight horsepower generator stuff. So good try. We'll just keep this in the parts bin for something else. All righty. It's been a few days and we got our parts for the carburetor. We got our float. Genuine Briggs Stratton part made in China. It looks like it's the right one. Here's the old one. Comes with a new float rod. We went ahead and I went since I was ordering that, I went ahead and ordered a new float bowl since this one's so so uh, pitted up. Made in USA, Briggs and Stratton. So we got both our parts. Now I'm gonna go ahead and assemble the carburetor. Let me uh, get them out of the packages and we'll see what it looks like. So the new float. The new float looks good. Looks like the the other one comes with a new pin. So that looks all good. The um, the new float bowl is gold anodized and looks like the same um, float bowl as the old one. It comes with a new nut, a new washer, and it comes with a new float bowl O-ring for the carburetor. So let's go ahead and start getting this thing together. So. I didn't buy a whole kit because I didn't think I needed a whole kit, you know, so take the, uh, so as in the previous video, you could see that that piece is broken. So what happens is, is when the needle, the needle gets put in there and it gets trapped. So now that goes in here. That goes in here and then the new float rod goes in just like so so let's make sure and th that that plastic piece there is the stop so the float can only drop that far that seems to be working good we got the needle the needle in the seat properly so that looks all good let me move this camera up a little bit wanted it seems like I keep getting out of frame so now got the gasket I'm sure I'm in frame yep the gasket goes around the base of the carburetor right there that looks good here's the new float bowl it goes on new nut new washer that was very nice that the float bowl came with a new nut washer. Tighten that up. And give that a good snuggin. Okay. So it's been a few days, but I know in the previous video I took that plug out and I cleaned the jet, the air bleed jet that was in here. I took this out. I had it in the carburetor cleaner. Uh, so this is basically all back together ready to go back on um, the generator so let's get it on the generator and let's see if we can get it all up and running all right I know that I haven't changed any of the fuel lines over yet um, I don't want to do that yet I don't want to spend any money on this until I know that this gets up and running I've already spent money on getting the carburetor so you got the uh, carburetor linkage here the rod goes in the plastic hole and then the spring goes in the other one so we have to put that in first All right, springs in. Uh, we'll go ahead and hook the fuel line up. It's got a little springy clamp here. Bring that back up. All right, and I probably, you know, I, like I said, I didn't want to spend a lot of money. I probably should have ordered new bolts because the one is messed up. Um, like I said, we're trying to keep this one on the cheap right now. 
to make sure that um, it runs before I spend too much more money on it. Those nuts there actually hold the uh, the air cleaner assembly on. Okay, so that's all hooked up. That's hooked up. Um, let me see if I can find my my uh, my reverse torques to tighten this up. And this one here is messed up. I'll use a pair of channel locks. So let me go find some more tools. And I'll be right back. Alrighty, I already got that nice and tight, so now it's time for the uh, back part of the air cleaner. This thing here is pretty neat. It's got a it's got a choke lever right here, but there's no linkage. It just has like this little um, finger that pushes that pushes on this. So you just got to make sure that it's in the that the carburetor is in its run position. That's choke. That's run. Make sure this is in its run position, and then this should just slide on here oh we also have this breather that's got to go in first so we'll go ahead and get the breather tube tucked back in its hole like it's supposed to be okay so now this should come up and slide right like that let's see if the choke works still choke Still basically works. Put the two nuts on. There, seven sixteenths or eleven millimeter. Oh, and Is that actually... Oh, yep, and then this screw goes in here. Unbelievably, the air filter's clean. So now the next piece that goes on is the air filter goes on like this, and then these two screws tighten up. I'm not gonna put the air filter on quite yet, just because I wanna be able to spray some starting fluid in it. So I still need to put the gas tank back on. Um, I still need to put the gas tank on, the gas tank um, mounts over here on those two studs and then the fuel line hooks up so let me get this let me um, go ahead and get this back on here and some gas in it and we'll see if we can get it fired up all right got the gas tank back on it I put you know half a gallon of gas in it I have not tried to start it up so I don't like pulling my brains out I did check the oil and I added a little bit of oil probably needs a little bit more oil and I went ahead and if you see over here I'll move it in closer I have plugged this fabulous lamp that I have plugged that fabulous lamp in to see if the generator actually is going to power up so I'll come up a little bit so you can see the light yeah you can see everything all right so like I said I don't like pulling my brains out these things are kind of hard to pull um, and my starting fluid took a tumble in the weeds so here we go. Let's give it a little, little squirt. Okay. This one does have a fuel pump, so. Oh, you know something? It might help if I turn the fuel on. 
Hey, that might help. Let's turn the fuel on. Let's give it a second or two. And, uh... Let there be light. I didn't think it was gonna work. Maybe, I, I don't know, I don't know. All right, well, I'm gonna play around with it a little bit more and uh, see how it goes. So, uh, let me walk away from it a little bit so you can hear me a little bit better. So there you go, um, home light. 4,400 watt generator, out for the trash, we went and picked it up, fixed the carburetor, up and running. I'm still curious about why the light took long, so long to come on. I might have to download the owner's panel to see what happens. Well, if you like my videos, please give me a big thumbs up, please subscribe, and we'll be doing more trash picking and lawnmower repairs and uh, mounting tires on lawn tractors. So if you like that type of stuff, please give me a thumbs up and please uh, subscribe. Thanks a lot everybody. Have a good night.